Number 73. A car travels three miles. Its tires make 2,640 revolutions. What is the radius of the tire in inches? All right, so let's take a look at a particular tire, and it has an unknown uh, radius. We also know that this particular car, right, with this size of a tire, will uh, travel a total distance of three miles. Okay, so this will represent three miles. Obviously, this is not to scale. Now, we somehow need to connect, right? I mean, the idea here, and also they want the radius in inches, but don't worry about that for now. Um, we somehow have to connect, had, you know, the radius of the tire to the linear length that this car traveled. Now, if you imagine this tire right here rotating, right? Let's say it's going to move to the right-handed direction. The tire is going to begin to rotate clockwise, right? And as the tire rotates clockwise, you can kind of imagine like a point here will begin to move to the left, right? And a point here will begin to also move to that left, right? And a point here will begin to move in that direction. So what's actually happening, if you envision this, is that the length of the ground that is being covered is equal to now the length of the tire covering the ground right? The length of this tire covering that entire ground. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that if we can find the circumference of this tire, okay, and we are able to find that circumference from knowing how many revolutions it makes in conjunction with the length it traveled overall, then we can find our radius, okay? Here, consider this for a second. Let me just back out of all that stuff. Consider this. If the tire makes 2,640 revolutions and it traveled a total of three miles, my question is then, what's the circumference of the tire? Let's start there, okay? Well, you're thinking, well, if it traveled three miles, okay, and it did 2,000, pretend it made one revolution actually, simplify the problem. Pretend this tire made only one revolution and it traveled a total of three miles. That would mean that the circumference of this particular tire with, would be three miles, right? Because as it rotated around one whole time, it traveled a total distance of three miles, okay? And that means whatever linear distance this is would equal one circumference, right? Or just the circumference because there was one revolution. But now pretend that uh, the car had, you know, a circumference of, let's say, three miles. And this were now six miles in total, right? So if the circumference of the tire were three miles, I know that's kind of strange. That would be a huge, huge tire. But the idea here is that if the uh, circumference were to be three miles and the total length traveled were six, you would be able to find the revolutions, right? You know that it would make two revolutions because the only way to get from three miles circumference to six miles in total is to rotate this tire two times, right? In other words, we can think about it this way. We can say now, with that understanding, we can say that the uh, ray, uh, circumference multiplied then by the revolutions will equal the linear length. Let me spell that a little, well, write it a little neater. Linear length. The linear length traveled, okay? So the circumference, that's the unknown. The amount of revolutions the car makes now is going to be 2,640 revolutions, okay? And that will equal now the linear length that it traveled, which was three miles. Now, if you consider the units, I'll plug in the units here. When you solve for your circumference, okay, it's going to be in terms of miles per revolution, right? Because what we're going to have to do is divide out the 2,640 from both sides, 2,640, and this is revolutions, revolutions. That goes bye-bye. Plug it on into your calculator now. 3 divided by 2,640. And there we get our answer now, right? And I'm going to put the answer up here at the top that the circumference is now equal to 0 0.00114. I'm going to round to there. Miles per revolution. Okay? Now, I know that sounds a little strange, but this is basically one thousandth of a mile. Now, that should kind of make sense, right? I mean, the, revolu the, the circumference of a tire should be quite small if we measured it in miles, okay? Um, all right. So that's what circumference, by the way, is. It's a linear length 
per revolution, per one revolution. That's actually what the circumference is. You might only see it in terms of a length, which is fine, but the assumption is that it's per one revolution, okay? Uh, now, now that we have that in hand, let's erase some of this. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to find now the radius. How? Well, you have to consider if I know the circumference, I know the formula that connects circumference to radius is this, right? It's the circumference formula, two times pi times the radius. So if I simply now plug in that circumference of 0 0.00114, right? That's gonna be miles per revolution, right? Blah, blah, blah. It just it doesn't even matter the units, don't worry. The radius is gonna be linear. You know, it's gonna be a linear length now. This is gonna be two pi multiplied then by r. To solve for r, just simply divide out the two pi from both sides. So your radius now will equal, go to the calculator, just hit, so you wanna plug in this answer first, so just hit enter, or excuse me, just hit divided by, because what it'll do is it'll take that prior answer and just plug it in there for you. So you wanna take that prior answer and divide it by parentheses now, cause you gotta, don't, you know, you gotta divide the entire uh, denominator here into the numerator. So you need a parenthesis, and that's just to be two times pi. Close those parentheses, and there you go. So the radius now is going to be 1.8, 1 1 I'll just round to 1 times 10 to the minus 4th, and that's in miles, okay? That's miles. Now that's the radius, but they didn't want it in miles. What did they want it in? They wanted it in inches. So now all you have to do is figure out how do we get from miles to inches. You need to know a conversion factor. Uh, there is going to be about 5,280 feet in one mile. And then you have to know how many inches are in a foot, okay? So there's one inch, oh, well, no, one foot. <laughs> one foot for every one inch. Now we can do our conversion with this information at hand, all right? Let's move that over. So we're gonna take our 1.81 times 10 to the minus fourth miles that we found. When you do your conversion, whatever unit you wanna cancel goes on the bottom. Whatever you, you want to find next, and I'd like to find inches, but I don't know a relation. Do you know how many inches there are in a mile? If you do, you can do this in one step. You just plug in your numbers, all right? But I, I don't, so I cannot do it in one step. I do know, though, how many feet are in a mile, okay? And therefore, I'm going to go from miles to feet first. And I plug in my unit, my numbers now. One mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. See, what'll happen now with the units is that the miles cancel. When you do the multiplication here, you would get your answer in feet. But we don't want to stop there. We want to continue. So this is like my new unit that I want to cancel. So that's why I'm going to write it on the bottom. And now I'm like, can I get to inches? And the only way I can get to inches is if I know a relationship between inches and feet. I'm like, oh, thank goodness, right? One foot is equivalent to 12 inches. And I don't know where the 12 went over here now that I'm looking at it. So hopefully if you, if you wrote something down and be like, ah, it's 12 Hopefully you continued watching because I found it, found the error. Um, and now notice, lo and behold, that the feet will cancel and that will now equal our value. So this was the answer that was already in that calculator. You see it up there? So you want to take that value now and multiply it. So just hit multiplication in the calculator. And what that'll do is it'll say answer times. It takes the last answer you had here and plugs it in. Okay, multiply by 5,280 and multiply that by 12 inches. Isn't this TI great? Such a great calculator. Um, so this is 111 point now 459. You know, it depends on where you want to cut it. You know, uh, I'm going to cut it here at about, I'll cut it at four, six, you know, four, uh, six. Okay, and that's going to be inches now. And that would be then the final answer. That's then the final answer. That's how many inches the radius will be. Uh, you know, we should have probably one significant figure because this only had uh, one significant figure in it. If you're like, what the heck are significant figures? Don't worry, you won't have to worry about that until you get to physics. Um, but, uh, you know, so for some reason when you do math calculations here, it's like sig figs, who cares? Then when you get to physics, if you don't pl plug in your significant figures, um, you fail the test. So uh, anyway, that's it. That's all I got for you. All right, if you rounded differently, your answer differently, that's fine. It's not going to make a difference. All right. Um, yeah. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Hopefully this video helped and I look forward to helping you with more. Take care.